praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, saying amen. We're that much more closer. Let's give God the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God. To him that sits on the throne, be all the glory, all the honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and all the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. We adore you on this fine, fine day. Lord, we thank you for another day, Lord. We praise you for what you're doing. Amen. We got our, our markers out, our blue, yellow, pink, blue, whatever you decide to use. Amen. To amen. Take note on we're that much more closer to the coming of the Lord and the, and the marriage supper of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And a welcome all, amen, to this Bible study today. Amen. Try not to take all your time of the day that you have to enjoy. But we're going to go right away to the word of the Lord in the book of Revelation. Amen. want to say we are excited. We're at the week of the event. We're at that week. Amen. We give God the praise, amen, for what he is about to do. Amen. Great things God is about to do. We, we're, we're living in great expectation of all that God's about to do. He's about to pour out of his spirit. Oh, my God, upon all flesh, he's about to bless us. Amen. In the name of Jesus, souls shall be fed, souls shall be saved. Amen. We thank God for what he's about to do. Souls are about to be delivered. Hallelujah. Souls are great. Harvest is coming to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen, amen. So the book of Revelation 19, I'm going to start at the very first verse. And it says here, And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again, they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, or the twenty-four elders, and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying amen hallelujah 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 to the lamb to him that sits on the throne amen and a great and a voice came out of the throne saying praise the praise our god all ye his saints and ye that fear him both small and great and i heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings. Now, let's take time and break that down. First, John says, I heard, as it were, a voice of great, of a great multitude. A great multitude. A number that cannot be numbered. Just a great multitude. And then he said he heard a voice of many waters. That sounds like Jesus. And then he said, I heard a voice of mighty thunderings that sounds like the father and the voice of many of, of a great multitude that you don't know god is so awesome in his ways he is so awesome who can find him who can know him amen he said his ways are above our ways his thoughts are above our thoughts oh glory to god amen and then he said saying hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. The Lord God omnipotent, meaning all power. His power is limitless. There's no ending to his power. Holy Osha. There's no ending. Amen. And then seven says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the what? The marriage. Get ready, get ready, get ready. The marriage supper of the Lamb is come. And his wife, hallelujah, his wife hath made herself ready. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Saints, are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready, get ready, get ready. The marriage supper of the Lamb is come. And his wife 
has made herself ready. And you know, we have the local marriage supper of the Lamb coming up. Amen. Will you be ready this week? Will you be ready? Amen. For that event. Amen. Then it says, the marriage supper of the Lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb is come. We're talking about the eternal. Amen. Marriage supper of the Lamb. Glory to God has come. Amen. And then it says, and his wife, we know, amen, the wife of Jesus Christ, amen, is the Gentile, amen, wife, amen. Oh, those Christians that shall give their life to the Lord, amen. We know, amen, the wife of God is Israel, amen. But his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. The fine linen, holiness, righteousness, pure and clean, is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, right blessed, hallelujah, gosh, uh, blessed are they which are called, amen, unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are true sayings. These are true sayings of God. Hallelujah. And I fell. Immediately John fell on it at his feet. And he began to worship. And he fell at his feet to worship, to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. Glory to God. And of thy brethren. Amen. He counts himself as one of the brethren of God. Amen. Of the saints of God. Because, amen, he was an angel. And he said, that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. Worship him. Amen. Not me. Amen. I'm just a created being. Worship him. He said, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I heard, amen, going on. And I heard heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. That's Jesus. Hallelujah. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. His eyes, the eyes of Jesus, glory to God, as a flame, were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. Because he's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. And he had a name written. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Only Jesus knew himself. And he was clothed. Hallelujah. With a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Amen. Let you know that he was he was sacrificed. He was hung up for a hang up. He was sacrificed for many. He was slain. And his Vesture was dipped in blood. That's the representing, amen, the, the saints that he died for. Oh, my God, the countless, countless many of people and souls that he died for that we may, beloved, have a right to the tree of life. Amen, through Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to skip down to the 10th. Oh, I went to the 10th. I'm going to go down to the 18th verse. He says that, and now here we see here. Let me go to the 16th verse before I go. He said, Oh, I got to go to the 15th verse. Hallelujah. This presentation might go a little longer than 30 minutes this time, saying, because it's so much. He said, in the 15th verse says, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Hallelujah. That with it he should smite the nations, and that he should rule them with a rod of iron, and he would tread at the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of, the all, of Almighty God. Hallelujah. No, but Jesus is not going to be nice. He's not coming as a nice little, oh, the cute little baby. No, no, no. He's coming as Lord of Lords, King of Kings. He's coming to handle business. Amen. And if you're ready, you're going to go with him. And those who have made themselves an enemy of the cross or enemy of Christ, an enemy of the church, amen, he's coming for you. And he's not going to be nice. He says, and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he should rule them with a rod of iron and he should tread the winepress. Oh my God. And of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God 
and he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. He comes to do duty. He comes to do duty. Amen. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And his name says it all. Hallelujah. He reigneth. He reigneth in righteousness. He reigns. He reigneth in omnipotence. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Our God reigneth, omnipotent, all-powerful, almighty. Glory to his name. Going down. Hallelujah. Amen to the 18th verse. And we'll go to the 17th verse. And he says, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, what are you talking about here? Amen. God has given them a ready. Okay, now they already been through a check. They already did, went through a rehearsal. Every time we see animals eating, amen, in the public, amen, that's a ready check. They're getting ready. They're getting ready. And, they, and God is summonsing them to the great feast, amen, so that God is going to provide for them on the mountains, and on the valleys, in the land, the, the valley called Armageddon, 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 amen. And then we go forth here on the 17th. He said, he said, come to the, and gather yourselves unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men. Oh, but they call themselves mighty, you know, and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Oh, my God. There's many small, many great, many mighty men, amen, that have armed themselves or put themselves in position against God and his and His anointed, oh my God, against Israel, hallelujah, God said, you're going to come to this battle, you're going to eat those, hallelujah, they thought they were too big for God, they thought they were too big for Israel, they thought they were too great, amen, they're going to come against God's anointed, God said, come to this battle, I want you to eat their flesh, he's going to, he's summoning the animals to come and eat their flesh, Oh, God, oh, God. 19 says, He said, He said, at the 19, And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken with him. And the, okay, the beast was taken with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Saints, we're talking about the end of the end time. And if we're that much more closer to this time that I'm talking about right now, amen, the time for the Antichrist to come on the scene. But first, amen, is the setting up of this war. God is already putting it at the doorpost. It's at the door, amen. Amen. And at the same time, the saints are going to be taken out. God has it simultaneously. Two things going on right here. The ushering out of the saints. Amen. Going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And at the same time, the battle of Armageddon, I mean the, the Gog and Magog war starting all simultaneously at the same time. Saints, we got to be ready. We got to have ourselves suited and booted for the rapture. Come on now. And then he says, and, and, the, and, the, and the mark of the beast, and them that worship his image, these both were cast into, or were cast alive, rather, into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. God ain't playing, saints. This is the end of the end. We got to get ready. Hallelujah. God is not playing. He's showing up, and he's going to show out. Hallelujah. And it says, and the remnant were slain with the sword of them that sat upon the horse, which, with, with, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls of the and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. God ain't playing. He's on his way back. He's coming to take his, and he ain't taking no prisoners. When he comes, he's, he's eradicating. He say, okay, you're not with me. If you're not with me, you're not for me, you're out of here. Amen. Only ones that he's taking with him are those who are accounted worthy. Amen. To the marriage supper of the Lamb. If you're not counted worthy, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, if you're not a Jewish, if you're not Jewish or a believer in Yeshua, if you're not saved and sanctified, you're not going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. You got to be ready, saints. We got to be ready. Amen. Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. Amen. The 19th. Lord, well, first of all, before we go there, let's go to uh, 18. Revelation 18. I don't want to rush too fast. Amen. We're talking about 
Babylon sins. Amen. We're going to start at the uh, first verse, go to eight. It says, after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. So this was a kind of supersized major angel, amen, in the host of heaven. He said, and he cried with a mighty, he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. Woo. Mm. Amen. He said, and of the and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. You see, there has been great sin. It's kind of when the cup gets full, the cup of sin, when it gets full, it begins to over and it begins to overflow and overflow. God, it, the stench of it rises up to his nostrils, and God said, Oh, enough is enough. And that's where we're heading to, my beloved. God is saying, Enough is enough. He said, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. It says, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. They love to eat, amen, from her table. He says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Amen. In other words, God is saying, if you want to be spared the judgment, the wrath, of her sins come out of her he's given the warning after warning after warning but are they hearing no some of them have itching ears they don't hear god is saying to the church don't be caught don't be caught a part of her oh my god come out of sin before it's everlasting too late and then it says five for her sins have reached unto heaven you see there they go it's reached past the nose amen all the way up to heaven he said he said they have they have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. He said, I remember, I remember. He said, and reward her, reward her even as she rewarded you. He said, I'm going to give her double for how she treated you, how she went against God's anointed, how she went against Israel. He said, he said, reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her work in the cup which well, she has filled, filled, filled to her double. He said, how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. In other words, she kept nothing from her, from her desires. And then so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no more widow and shall see no sorrow. I don't want to hear no bad news. Amen. Nothing but good news. That's what she said. Amen. She thought she had it going on. But God said, wait, wait, wait. Uh-uh. Your time is coming. Eight says, therefore shall her plagues come in one day. What did they do to Israel in one day on the seventh? Oh, they're going to reap that, saints. They're going to read it. They're going to reap it. They're going to reap it. What they did to Israel on October 7th, it's coming. It's coming back to them. God said, oh, in one day, her place shall come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. God says, I got everything I need. I don't need no help. I'm God all by myself. And I'm going to show you that I'm God. Ha, ya, 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 ya. I'm going to show you that I'm God. Amen. Down to the 18th verse. Hallelujah. And then it says, oh, let me go up. I got to go up. In the 10th verse, he says here, talk about the morning of Babylon, that, that wicked city, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones 
and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood um, and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of precious wood and, and of brass and iron and marble. And then they even have more. It says, and cinnamon, which is a very pricely commodity and odors, all type of perfume and ointments and frankincense, which is very high commodity and wine and oil. All of this is expensive and fine flour uh, and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slave slaves and souls of men. Oh yeah, there's still slavery going around around. They think they hide it. God said, mm-hmm. He said, I see what you got. He said, I, I, I'm weighing all that you got. Amen. Because you used and flaunted what you had. Amen. And flaunted it against my anointed, against my precious people, Israel. He said, and then he said, and the fruits, 14, and the fruits that they, that thy soul lusted after and departed from thee and all things, all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. God said, I'm doing away with all your treasuries. All your treasuries, everything that you thought that made you want to flaunt a collar or pop a collar as they, as they speak and say. He said, and the 815 says, and the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing they're going to cry weep and wail because of their retribution that god's going to bring upon their head for what they've done to israel and the saints in light and saying alas alas that great city which was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearl for in one hour so great riches has come to naught America, Babylon, in one hour. You ever heard of an overnight sensation? Well, this is the reversal. An overnight, overnight in one day, the enemies of God shall come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? Oh my God. You know, with great, the greater the city, the greater the fall. Amen. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her coastlines. For in one hour she is made desolate. In just one hour. Amen. You know, now God's timing, you got to understand God's timing is not like man's timing here on earth. So when God, one day is as a thousand years with the Lord, or a thousand years is as one day rather with the Lord. So we got to understand when he speaks of one hour, that could mean a day in God's time. Oh yeah, thank you Jesus. For in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heavens, and ye holy apostles. And prophets, for God have avenged you on her. Now, what does he mean by he says thou apostle and apostles and prophets? What is the word? What is the, what is the, the, the kingdom of heaven built upon? Christ, the church is built upon the apostles and the, the apostles and the prophets and Jesus Christ, who is our chief cornerstone. That's what the kingdom of heaven, the church, is built upon. So he's saying, Oh church, amen. Rejoice over her. Thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Amen. So whatever you're going through in the church, if you're part of the church, the ecclesia, God is saying, I got you. Hallelujah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm revenging for you. He said, Hallelujah. For God hath avenged you on her. And then 21 says, And a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great stone. I'm sorry to read that verse again. 20th verse says, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For God hath avenged 
you on her. That's right. Every apostle, every prophet, amen, the church, the ecclesia, God said, I shall avenge you on her, on Babylon. Babylon. And, then, and 21 says, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more. No more enemies of God, no more. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. No, there's no more rejoicing in that city. Because <laughs> that city, the enemies have been thrown down. And no craftsman, no, and of what? So ever craft he be, shall be found no more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. Ha, ya, sha. Hey, man, we're talking about God doing retribution, bringing retribution. And it's coming for the saints. Retribution is coming. And the light against all our enemies. Retribution is coming. And the light of a candle. And what God's going to give us, amen. He's going to give us retribution to those that have fought against us. God's going to fight against all our enemies. And the, and, the, and the wealth transfer to the saints is coming because God is bringing retribution. He's avenging us of revenge. He's avenging us rather of all of those that came against us. And it says, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom, here we go. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. In other words, they're, gonna, they're not going to be rejoicing no more in marriage. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. In other words, no reason to rejoice in thee, O Babylon. He said, because you deceived the nations. He said, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. In other words, God's going to bring vengeance upon all those that avenge themselves upon God's family. God said he's going to fight for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go to Isaiah, amen, 13. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, blessed, blessed be the Lamb. Blessed to the Lamb of God. Amen, 13. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to his name. Glory to his name. You know, saints, we got to keep a mindset that Jesus is coming. Just like that bird that, ha that has a one mind, amen, one mind perspective to, to find its goal, amen, that food or whatever, amen, that beacon. Jesus, we're his beacon. We're, we're his goal, amen. He's going to rapture up the saints. We're getting out of here, saints, amen. Time is coming even faster than you think. Isaiah 13 and 19 says, And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms. It was the glory of kingdoms. But it won't soon be anymore. <laughs> the beauty of the Chaldees' ex excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. He's going to overthrow Sodom. No. What? What did I say he's going to? Didn't he do that already? <laughs> God, in the book of Genesis, he overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. That's right. They were twin cities, just like Minneapolis, Minnesota. He's, he's going to overthrow it again. God said, if we don't judge this present world, so let's go all the way back and repent. Amen. To Sodom and Gomorrah. God don't have to repent. God told us, amen. Let's go back in number 23. We know God is not a liar. Right? Right? You, you know that, right? Numbers 23. What did he say in his word? Hallelujah, God is not a man that he should lie. Come on, let's read it. He said, God, 23 and 19, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Isn't that what he said? <laughs> Just a little repeat, repeat. Let's go back to Isaiah 13 and go over that again at the 19th verse. He said, and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms. The beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when he overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, so we know God does not lie. If he said it, he shall surely bring it to pass. That's the word of the Lord. 
Isaiah 14 and 8 reads, it's going to be 8 through 11. He said that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how have the oppressor ceased? How have the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. In other words, you got no more authority. Uh, staff represents authority. No more authority here for you, wi oh, wicked one. He said, and the scepter of the rulers. In other words, God said, I got them too. They're broken. He said, six says, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted. Now they're persecuted. And none hindereth. In other words, you won't be able to stop the hand of God. Why? God said he's, he's angry at the wicked. How many days? Every day. <laughs> That's terrible. God said, I'm angry at the wicked every day. Okay. He said, he said, he, he said, they're, they're, the wicked is persecuted and none hindereth. None can stop it. None can stop it. None can stop it. Amen. Then the seventh verse says, the whole earth is at rest. The whole earth is at rest. Oh, that sounds like the end of the book, doesn't it? How God says he's going to bring judgment on the world to the, our enemies. That's why the saints are going to be taken out of here. And once we're taken out of here, it's going to be a total rest. That sounds kind of familiar. Let's think back. Genesis. When he made the earth, after he made the earth, what did he do? He rested. On the seventh day, another Sabbath, a day of rest, because the work was what? Completed. Amen. Here we are again at another day of rest. And then it says here on the seventh verse. Ain't that something? And it's the seventh verse. Ooh, look at God. And the, oh, the whole earth is at rest and it's quiet. They break forth into what? Singing. Hallelujah. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no fellow is come up against us. I mean, God is, you know, God is so good, he's going to take out all our enemies. And none of them, even Lebanon, will not be able to rise against thee, O Israel, anymore. Nine verse says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee. And this is a warning to all the enemies of God. It is a sure warning to all the enemies of Israel. He said, hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Ooh, it stirreth up. It stirreth up the dead. For yea, even all the chief ones of the earth. Those that think they bad, telling, giving, dishing out wolf cookies against Israel, what they going to do to Israel. He said, even all the chief ones of the earth, it hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Who? He said, all they that shall speak and say unto thee, all uh, Art thou also become weak as we? In other words, you thought you thought Israel was weak. Israel saying, Are you become weak as we were? No, it's because they were confounded with the compassed with all the enemies that were coming against them. He said, Art thou become like as unto us? But then eleven says, Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. Before I go on, in that verse, talking about hell has moved, the Bible tell, tells us that it's moved. Heaven has opened its mouth wide. Oh, yeah, there's a verse that tells that hell has made its, it's opened its a mouth wide, wide, rather. Has opened, has opened, hallelujah, has opened, hallelujah, its mouth wide hallelujah jesus oh glory to god that's right 5 and 14 that's right i'll go over there in just a second amen let me just go over there real quick before i finish this five and well let's say that five and 14 and isaiah says therefore hell hath enlarged itself 
Isaiah 5 and 14, hell, therefore hell has enlarged itself and openeth her mouth without measure. It's like, whoa, as big as you can open it. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp. That pomp sounds familiar. We heard it in Isaiah over here in the 14th verse. That sounds a little like pomp and circumstance. <laughs> Close to the word pride, right? He says, and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Ooh, all those pomp and circumstance of the world that have come against Israel, they're going to descend into that gaping hole that has made itself wide in hell. That's the word. Ooh, let me put that down. Isaiah 5 and 14 has opened its mouth wide. They're saying, oh, we got a lot more coming, y'all. A lot more. Make room, make room. Ooh, my God, my God, my God, my God. He says, thy pomp, back in 14 of Isaiah, in the 11th verse, thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee. There's a worm that, that, that ceaseth not, it just eats and eats and eats. It's, it's spread under thee, and then it says, and the worm, the worms, more than one, cover thee. So it can just continually eat and roast on the bottom and roast on top of all the enemies of God. Ooh, the Bible says, the worm dies not. Ooh, let me get that scripture. Hallelujah. 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 The worm dieth not. Let me go there. It's Isaiah 66. Hallelujah. 66 and 24. Isaiah, let's run there. Isaiah 66 and 24. Hallelujah. The Bible doesn't lie. The Bible does not lie. 24 says, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses, the, ca the carcasses, excuse me, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die. Their worm shall not die. Their worm shall not die. Neither shall their fire be quenched. Ooh, that's the eternal fire of God. And their fire shall, and neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Nobody's going to want to look on them. Mm. They're going to be, ooh, don't look, don't smell. Okay. So here, 14. He said, and their pomp is brought down to the grave, and, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Then it goes on about, oh, Lucifer, how thou art fallen. But we're not going there. We already know he's already, he's already kind of crispy right about now. So we're going to go over to Isaiah 47. God let you know. He's letting us know, saints, that we're that much more closer to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Because the enemies, the enemies of God are about to be um, judged. So Isaiah 47, verse 8 through 15. He says, therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures saints we gotta be careful not to be given to much pleasures of this world amen especially that which is unholy ungodly he said he said thou that art given to much pleasures or given to pleasures that dwell carelessly that's america in babylon or babylon that is america amen and there's many babylons that portrayed through the scripture but primarily this is talking about america that says in thine heart i am and none else beside me i am in reference to one of the redemptive names of god or the titles of god who did god share that with moses he moses said who should i say have sent me god responded tell him that i am that i am here we see America, a.k.a. Babylon, is trying to use 
one of the names of God. He said, who says in thine heart, I am and none else. Ooh, none else beside me still trying to act like they're God. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. That's pride and pomp, pomp and circumstance, just pride. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day. There's that hour. <laughs> one day is like the hour with to God. The in one day the loss of children and the and widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for their multitude of the of thy sorcery or the Luigi. And for the great abundance of thine enchantments, again, more witchery. God's going to judge the witchery. And for thou, for thou hast trusted in the wickedness, thou hast said, none seeth me. In other words, I can keep doing what I'm doing in darkness because nobody sees this. Oh, but God does. God see it. He says, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. The wise of the world has become the foolishness to God, as foolishness before God, for it perverts thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, again, I am. And none else beside me. They try to use the name of God. God said, I am God, and beside me there is none other or none else. They're trying to use the name of God. Therefore, verse 11, shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know. Oh, you won't even know when he comes. God is smooth like that. Ask the Egyptians. They came after God. And God had to save Israel. Israelites safe in Goshen. In Goshen. While over in Egypt, there was plague after plague after plague after plague after plague. Oh, that's right. It was ten or oh, five more. Plague after plague after plague after plague after plague. Ten plagues. It wasn't until the very last plague that they said, okay, now we, uh, uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now, God. I, I can hear you now. <laughs> he said, therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it Rises and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. You won't get out of this one. Because we know after the Twin Towers fell, we'll build bigger buildings. We'll make it better, stronger, and with more fancy illustriousness. And, oh, we'll be greater. But God said, thou shalt not be able to put it off and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly which thou shall not know now understand when i say that in referring to twin towers god forbid for all those lost souls god forbid we've got would have it that none should perish but all those who have set themselves as the enemy of god i'm talking about mystery babylon i use that only the twin towers as a as a as, a, as an example of how when you try to get out of it, those who are, are enemies of God will not be able to get out of it. But God, we pray for those who are the bereaved, the grieving, those who have lost their loved ones at the Twin Towers or any place in any part of this world, especially America, especially Israel. But for those that come against Israel, God's going to come against you. That's the word of the Lord. And it says here, and desolation shall come upon the subtly which thou shalt know stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorcery wherein thou hast labored from thy youth in other words they dabbled in that since they were a youngin if so be thou shalt be able to profit you won't be able to make any money off of this if so be Thou mayest prevail. In other words, you think you'll be able to come out of this on top. If you think thou mayest prevail. Then the 13th says, Thou art weary, you're tired. 
in the multitude of thy counsel. In other words, there's no wisdom in thy counsel. Let now the astrology, uh, the astrologers, the astrology is of the devil. We don't read a horoscope. Signs follow us. That's what the word says for saints. If you are saved, if you are a believer in Yeshua, signs follow us that believe. But for those who are not, they dabble in astrology. They dabble in the horoscope. And that's why they got spirits drawn unto them. Because they open up the door wide and let it in. He says the stargazers also. Those who worship the stars. Yes, we got the eclipse coming on the 8th of April. But we don't worship it. It's only a sign of what God is about to do. That's all it is. The monthly procrastinate, procrastinators, the monthly procrastinators, those that are planning and plotting, God's, and, and, and then those that stand up to do evil and save, he says, and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. God said, you better start praying now that, I, that you will be saved from these things that are about to come on thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. Let's think about stubble. Go to the wilderness. Go to the Sahara Desert. You might see a little stubble if you find even that much. Because when God calls you stubble, he's talking about wiping it out. There's no grass growing. There's no twigs. There's not even a tree in sight. It's just stubble, like a wasteland. Ooh, God ain't playing. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves. From the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to worm it all. Y'all ain't gonna, he don't need to use the beggarly elements of this world. He's fire all by himself. Ask Jeremiah. He's at the consuming fire. Jeremiah said, it felt like fire shut up in my bones. Nor fire to sit before it. Oh, God. This is not a warming yourself of the blanket type of fire. No, it's not a cozy fire. It's a harming fire to make everything desolate type of fire. Oh, my God, my God. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. I repeat, none shall save thee. Again, for the Holy Ghost, none shall save thee. All, so are all the enemies of God. None shall save thee. My God, my God. Going on. That's God judging the great wickedness and sin. Amen. Go over to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, 40 through 46. It says, as God overthrew Sodom, there it is again. As God overthrew, excuse me, as God overthrew, past tense. He already did it. He overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, so shall no man abide there. So shall no, no, nobody can live there. It's unlivable. Neither shall any son of man dwell there. It's unlivable. And God said, Phew, I blow on it. That was it. It was all over but a shout. Angels, go do my bidding. And they went, took out Sodom and Gomorrah. No man lives there. You can go over there and search it out if you want to. You'll just find nothing. It's unlivable. It's nothing but salt from all the solder, from the fire. Behold, a people shall come from the north and a great nation. What's up north? Uh, let's see. Moscow, uh, let me think, Russia, the place that, one of the places that God will judge, let me read it again, behold, a people shall come from the north, and a great nation, and many kings, let's think of those kings, let me see, hmm, Iran, we already said Russia, oh, is there Turkey, the three main confederate nations that would come together against Israel. 
for many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. They shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel. Look how many they've already taken out. And we're all looking at Ukraine is what I'm referring to. It will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea. And they shall ride upon horses. We know today they use more than horses. They got their iron tanks. That's what Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel was seeing. John the Revelator, Daniel. Everyone put in array. Oh, God. They're all over the place. Like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon. O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon hath heard, have heard thee, report of them, and his hands waxed, his hands waxed feeble. Anguish took hold of him, and pain as of a woman in travail. Behold, he shall come up like a lion. From the swelling of Jordan unto the habitation of the strong. But I will make them suddenly run away from her. Who's her? Israel. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? Who is like God? And who will appoint me the time? Can you tell God what to do? Ask the Leviathan, <laughs> whom God also created. And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd, Psalm 23. Who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Is there another? I only know one, Yeshua. Therefore, hear ye me. Oh, that sounds like my message on Sunday. Hear ye, hear ye, the king is coming. Oh, Shiloh, hear ye the counsel of the Lord. Hear the counsel of the Lord. This is his judgment. The counsel of the Lord that he has taken against Babylon. Mm. And against, uh, he, that he's taken against Babylon and his purposes. That he have purpose against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely. The least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. I don't want to be an enemy of God. I don't want to be on that side. I'd rather be on the right side of God. Where there's victory, peace, love, and happiness, and joy, and kindness, and meekness, and temper, all that good stuff. Amen. In his heavenly abode. That's what I want to be on. We don't want to be an enemy of God. So if you're in that we're going to talk about it. Hold on. If you're in part of that number on the bad side, the left side, you better get out of there. He says, and then 14 says, 46 verse says, Who at the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. Did you hear it? Can you hear it? Oh my God, that great sound. Boosh, boosh, boosh. God's going to make war with Babylon. And you're going to hear it throughout all the nations. It's not going to be nothing nice. God is serious. God is going to do what he said. Hallelujah. Oh, God have mercy. I'm not even going to go to Ezekiel 38. That is just take too long. But I'm going to come with this verse of scripture in Luke 17. Luke 17. Because we're getting ready, beloved, to get out of here. The saints, the, the anointed, the beloved of God. Is, we're getting ready to get out of here. Luke 17, 29 to 32. It says, 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom. God told him to get out of there. He said, I'm not playing. The same day, in one day. In one day, or in one hour. Here we go. It rained it rained, not water, it rained fire. I think when God took, when God allowed Noah to get the animals and, the, and his, his, his relatives, I think it was only eight saved. He said, yeah, he destroyed the earth with water. He said, but next time it's going to be fire. Read here. 
Shata. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone. That was a test run. Fire, it rained fire. I can't even phantom. Fire and brimstone. We know what happened over there in Hawaii, but it's not even close to what God's about to do. Judgment on Babylon. From heaven. It came from where? Heaven. And destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In the same day. The marriage supper of the Lamb is going to be, gonna be taken out of here. And whoever's left. That's going to be a sad day. A bad day in Black Rock, as they say. For those who are not saved, who are not believers in Yeshua, or Mashiach. In that day, he shall be upon the housetop. In that day, he which, rather, shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house. Let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him not return back. What does that mean? Verse 32, 32 says, remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. In other words, don't turn back. There's no turning back. Hezekiah said in the song, no turning back. There's no turning back. Beloved, once you get hold to the horns of the altar, don't turn back. Don't backslide. Now it's not the time to backslide. It's not time to get out of line. Get in line. Get ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. For it's at hand. It's coming soon. I'm going to be like Marcus Theater. Not at a theater near you, but in your house. The marriage supper of the Lamb is coming. Mm. Isaiah 5 and 4. What could have been done more to my vineyard mm. that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I look at it, should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes, the parable of the vineyard. God wants to save you. If I go to the first verse. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath my vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the, with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. Israel is a vineyard. Saints, we have to be ready. He said, he's looking at the vineyard, and he's saying, what's going on? What's going on? Talks about the vines, the, 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 the grapes, and then there's the wild grapes. Israel and the Gentiles, Jews and Gentiles, God wants us to be ready. He said, I'm getting the saints ready. I'm getting ready to get you out of Dodge. We're about to get out of here. Immediately after the church is taken out, shall Ezekiel 38 happen. Amen. The judgment that we just went over in Isaiah, in Revelation. Jeremiah, saints, nobody wants to be left here. You don't want your worst enemy to be left here during that time. Are you ready? Don't let it be said too late. Don't let it be said. And then for seven years, we know in Ezekiel 38, 39, it talks about how they're going to be burning all the weapons. All the weapons for seven years. During that seven-year span of time. We're going to be in heaven celebrating with Yeshua HaMashiach at the marriage supper of the Lamb. I hope to see you Saturday, March 30th 
at here, the local marriage supper of the Lamb. We won't be able to do like Yahweh. Because can't nobody do a party like Jesus. <laughs> Love you. We're praying for you. Hope to see you soon. God bless you. Shalom. Hallelujah. The marriage supper of the Lamb.